Hey, it's T sequel time with Eric Dar. <laughs> All right, uh, usual, usual song and dance here. Uh, all 23 hours of uh, the beginner content from my T SQL course, Learn T SQL with Eric, is available now. Uh, the price is $250 and it will be advancing to, uh, to double in value. Uh, it will go up to $500. Uh, so you can you can you can short me if you want uh, when the advanced material uh, drops after the summer months have concluded. Uh, so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some like a couple of things you should know about merge. Like I'm not going to sit here and be like, this is how you write a merge statement. I'm going to just show you some stuff that uh, can kind of make working with merge somewhat less painful and maybe explain why you might get weird results with merge sometimes so let's let's do that let's have that let's have that kind of fun today so the first thing uh when you are when you're writing a merge statement and uh you are you intend that merge statement to have multiple actions uh so like update and insert like the upsert like um form of merge is probably the most common the first thing is that you absolutely need this serializable hint here um to prevent strange things from happening uh when you run that there are all sorts of strange concur concurrency phenomena that may occur if you do not use this so this is the very first thing here the second thing i want to show you in this in this section is how to make the uh matched section for uh to perform the update portion of the merge a little bit easier to write so when uh, what I see in a lot of matched clauses is not this, right? What I see is a lot of stuff like where t.name is not equal to s.name and t.name is null or s.name is null and t.userID is not equal to s.userID or t.userID or s. Like it just goes on forever with these like not equal to or null like foreverness things because you might have nulls and you can't do the not equal to nulls and the whole thing just turns into a nightmare. This is a much more clean and concise way of writing this. You say select like the the target columns except select the s dot columns. Uh, you could potentially well. Well, you would, you would have to may have to reverse some other stuff if, if you did if you reversed it. But uh, if you do this, this will save you all the null checking because except handles nulls uh, graciously for you. So that is the that is the main thing here. The other thing that I want to talk about is the using clause. Now, the using clause for a lot of people feels like a join uh, because there is an on clause. And that, that's, that's, that's reasonable, but you do have to be, uh, you, what you should be aware of is that using is somewhat more like a from clause than a join clause. Um, and what I mean by that is if you were to write a query like this, and you were to say using badges, uh, badges stage as S on like S.ID equals T.ID and S.UserID equals 22656, uh, like like any any anyone anyone from the from this who didn't like match this exactly would go to the when not matched by target and would go to the insert portion which is probably not what you intend so when you're writing your using clause a lot of the times what you want to do and this this might seem sort of similar to when we talked about like um, pivot and unpivot how when you write the pivot query uh, you kind of want like if you use a derived table expression uh, you can you control better the columns that SQL Server will attempt to do attempt to do the like implicit grouping by thing. Uh, so when you're when you when you write a query where you only want to get certain stuff from a table to use for your merge, what you want to do is wrap that up into something like this. So you're only getting uh, like your what the data source that you're using is a select from the staging table where user ID equals two two six five six. So this will limit it to just that portion of the data, rather and, and you won't end up with like weird uh, bugs and potential other things going on when you hit the when not matched by portion. So um, just a couple things 
that might help you write somewhat better merge statements in there. Uh, one, if you are performing multiple actions, you must use the serializable uh, 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 locking hint uh, on the uh, target table. Two, if uh, you are using, uh, if, if in your matched clause, you have to write an excessive amount of null checking, it is a lot easier to just say and exists select columns that you care about except select the other columns that you care about to do your update and uh, when you are writing the using clause if there is any additional sort of filtering or anything else that you you want to do here um, confine it to a derived table so that you actually you start with the correct data source and you don't have weird things uh, flying around your uh, matched and not matched clauses or in, in your merge statement so uh, that's about it here um, you know there, there, if you want to read a lot about merge um, I would highly suggest looking at Michael J Swartz blog uh, he says lots of fantastic things about merges and upserts uh, because he uses them a lot. I don't know if he says any of this stuff directly, but um, if, if, he, if he doesn't, I'm sure he says other very, very smart things about it. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in the next video uh, where we will talk, I, I believe, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about output next. So that'll be, that'll be great fun for all of us, won't it? All right. Thank you for watching.